Are you looking for the perfect resource to teach primary English? Well, today on Resource Review, we'll be discussing three that might fit the bill. A package of books and CD-ROMs to teach writing. Police are investigating a series of attacks on three poultry farms in the area. A CD-ROM to teach grammar. Get your boots on. It's time for penalty shootout. And a website packed with learning activities. Find out what our panel of experts think in a moment here on Resource Review. Recommending today's resources is Megan Robinson. Megan is head teacher at Crondall Primary School in Hampshire. Joining us on the panel, we also have Jill Budgel. Jill is an independent publisher and writer and has over 20 years of experience in the educational field. We also have Kate Ruttle, deputy head teacher at Great Heath Primary School, Milden Hall in Suffolk. So thank you all very much for coming. Megan, let's begin with models for writing. What is this resource and why did you choose it? Well, it's basically a writing package and there's a package for Key Stage 1 and one for Key Stage 2. What I like about Models for Writing is that it's got a teacher's book, a pupil's book, a photocopyable master's book, as well as an interactive part of the programme. So there's an interactive whiteboard that can be used with success. So my, my experienced teachers are able to dip into it and use the resources as they think they can use it most effectively. And the newly qualified teachers have a very structured programme that they can rely on. Brilliant. Well, to find out whether Models for Writing really is a model resource, we gave it to teacher Fiona Sinclair and her Year 4 class at Our Lady of Victories Primary School in London to try it out. The resource I was using today in my literacy lesson was the GIN Models for Writing for Year 4. It comes in a set, you have a pupil book, you have the teacher's book which has two lesson plans for each unit, you also have a book of photocopy masters and finally it also comes with a CD-ROM. Now you've got a book in front of you, what I would like you to do is could everybody please turn it to page 12. Don't read the story, just open it up at page 12. The way I used the resource today in my literacy lesson was that the children had the people book in front of them and we've been looking at newspaper reports so there was a very exciting newspaper report in there which we read and we used our kung fu punctuation skills to make sure that we'd noted all the punctuation in that report and knew where it should be. Police are investigating a series of attacks on three poultry farms in the area. <laughs> The children responded really well to the pupil book. They loved it. They were saying they thought it looked really exciting and interesting. They loved the colours. They thought it was really well set out for them. And also, in the pupil book, it has tips for them. It says, don't forget to do this when you're doing this exercise, which really helped the children to stay focused and they knew what they were supposed to do. Good, I'm seeing some good questions. I'm not sure it stretches the brightest children quite as much as it could, but then that's the teacher's job to think of extension activities to go with it. That sort of thing. The great thing about it is that you have lesson plans which are written out for you that coincide completely with the National Literacy Strategy Unit directives and it's just, it's the sort of thing that you could walk into a classroom, if you were covering for somebody for a day, you could pick up this resource and you could teach the whole lesson, have it beautifully differentiated and I think the children would really enjoy it too. Megan, overall a very positive assessment, but one criticism perhaps that this wouldn't stretch the high achieving pupils. What would you say to that? I would say that's a fair comment and I think that's the difference between a good teacher and an excellent teacher. And the point that the teacher made was that someone could come into the room, for example a supply teacher, and teach a good lesson. But in order to make that a really good lesson, it's about the teacher understanding the children in her class including the more able, and how to effectively stretch those children and meet their needs. So I would agree with her comment. 
Okay. Jill, I really liked the look of the, the pupil book in particular. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, are you a fan of this resource? Um, um, I, I have been a fan of this resource, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not the newest thing um, around. I think Models for Writing has been um, in use for, for several years in classrooms, um, and I understand that there are new elements to it. And I was slightly disappointed in the, in the preview that we saw that the teacher wasn't using the interactive CD-ROMs. I would really like to have seen how, how she was able to use that in the classroom. I don't know if you agree. Megan. Definitely. Mm. I um. observed a lesson recently with one of my teachers and it was a big part of the lesson mm. to use the interactive program and it certainly does make a huge difference yeah. to the lesson. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Kate, what's your overall view of this resource? I like it. I mean I think that it does exactly what Megan says it is. My major criticism is that I believe that redrafting is an absolutely fundamental part of learning to write because that's very often the point. Very often the children do a brain dump get their ideas on the paper. And that's fine for SATs. And for SATs, which this really prepares you for, it's about planning and then the brain dump. But where children really learn to become good writers is when they redraft. And this doesn't even mention redrafting at any point. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, is that a problem, do you think, Megan? Would you like to see that flagged up? Even Absolutely. if it's not covered, it should really be mentioned. Yes, it should be mentioned, but, and I think this is where schools have to be careful because we're not the sort of school where we just buy a programme or a package and stick to it. We don't just use one or another or another. Yeah. We, we use the national literacy strategy as a basis and then we find programmes that are appropriate for helping to teach those concepts. I think Kate's point is very valid, that okay. redrafting is very important. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Now let's move on to Megan's second choice of resource. It's a CD-ROM all about teaching grammar. So, Megan, tell us about the grammar show. Well, I love the grammar show because it's fun, and that's what I think learning should be about. It's like, it's like a game show format that children know and love so well, and adults. It's fun to play. It covers all the concepts of grammar, from nouns to verbs to pronouns. It gets quite difficult. Okay. Uh, things I'd never heard of before when I first <laughs> looked at it. God. But it's, it's a, they do a pre-test in a fun way, so it's to gauge what level they're at. Uh, there's reports for teachers so that they can see. There's lots of things okay. that, that we liked about it. Well, thank you very much. Before we open it up and hear what our panel think, let's see the grammar show in use. We gave it to teacher Kirsty Judge at Whitehall Primary School and she used it with her Year 4 class. Right, now then, sentences. Tell me what you know about sentences. What I was doing today with the CD was that I was hoping to introduce the children to it. It's their first um, viewing of it. And I wanted them to listen to the introduction so that they would know what the CD was about. We're going to just watch the introduction and then we're going to pause it, OK? And then I'll ask you what you think. The grammar show what hopes to clearly yeah, inform the children about first, how to make a sentence, but then it hopes also to get children excited about, you know, how they can change sentences around to create, you know, more exciting situations. Now, there were two characters in there. Who remembers the names of the two people who were introduced to us? The grammar show um, is based around two characters and the reason I think that they chose the two characters is that they could clearly identify that Hamish was the person who gave the instructions and then Gail was the person who introduced the fun side of things, the games. They enjoyed the two characters, they certainly enjoyed the games. But um, I do feel that the actual sentences themselves were the, the part of the CD that I wanted to be the most amusing. In order for the kids to really take on board what the learning point was, I need the sentences to be more funny. To be a sentence, it should have a question mark at the end. I would say that I've come out of that lesson feeling um, much more positive about the CD than when I viewed it by myself, because the children have reacted well to it. So. What I would say to teachers is, you know, you're probably going to have the same reaction as me. You'll watch it, you'll think, oh, that's a bit corny, and then you show it to the kids and they love it. So <laughs> if it works for them and it teaches them about sentences, then it's worth it.
Well, Megan, we saw the resource there being used for whole class teaching. Would you advocate other forms of use? I've never used it as a whole class teaching. That's not why we bought it. We bought it so that individual children could go into our IT suite, put the headphones on, put the program on, and tailor it to their needs because that's what we liked about it. The children had a fun sort of pre-test and then it gauges their level and then sets informative as well as the fun games and things. So it shows them what they don't understand, gives them a few games to try that out and assesses their level. And then the teacher can go in as a teacher, log in as a teacher and check how those children are progressing. Okay. Kate, what are your thoughts on the grammar show? In principle, I have a problem with decontextualised grammar exercises. I actually don't believe in my experience of teaching literacy that they impact hugely on the children's writing. And I would much rather teach it in a short tailored passage which the children can then use directly in the conduct piece of writing they're going to do. Megan, what would you say to that? I, I, I take Kate's point, but I think it's important to do it both ways. I think there is, a, there is a role in isolation of teaching grammar, as well as using it in the whole context of writing or reading. OK. Uh, Jill, what mm. do you think are the pros and cons of the grammar show? Mm, well, I agree, I agree with Kate. I've, I've fundamentally got a slight problem with the grammar show. But there are two particular things that I really liked about it. One was that the activities are obviously very geared to boys. And I really thought that in this current market where many, many teachers are looking for things to support boys with writing, that was a positive. And the other positive thing was in the teacher's notes, I noticed there were lots of quite structured ideas for work away from the computer. Yes. And I thought that was a real plus. Mm. OK, well, thank you. We've got to move on now to Megan's third choice of resource. And it's a website from the BBC called RevisWise. So, Megan, why this website? RevisWise is great. Once again, it's fun. It's for children, it's for parents, it's for teachers. So everybody can access it, which is terrific. It, uh, it basically helps children with their preparation for their Key Stage 2 SATs. There's games, there's information, there's worksheets, there's all sorts of things tailored to what children need. And this is a free resource. It is, absolutely. So that's a very positive point. Mm, we like the free. <laughs> <laughs> Time for quick comments from the panel. What, what did you think? Yeah. Um, yes, I, I really like, like it too, um, and I've, I've used it. Um, and I noticed that it was cross-curricular, which I think is an important point. Mm. Kate, did you like this resource? I did like it. I mean, in this climate where we are driven by SATS results, it is very clearly focused not on teaching or helping children to write, but on helping children to get a good mark in their SATs. Mm. And I would send any child to this website. Yes. It's very reassuring, very. isn't it? Mm. It's very, very mm. reassuring. It's very structured, and it tells mm. you you're very good at it. Mm. And right. I like that. Mm. OK. Well, thank you all very much. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. But just to summarise, today's resources we looked at. Models for Writing, a suite of books and CD-ROMs from GIN, part of Harcourt Education. The Grammar Show CD-ROM from Sherston. And finally, the BBC RevisWise website. For more information on all of the resources that we've discussed today, or to post your own comments about other resources for primary English, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. If you want to, email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. So all that remains for me to do is to say a big thank you to our panel, to Megan, to Jill and to Kate. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.